doing a lot of practice on these and you'll feel very comfortable with these at the end. So again, if we want to go ahead and find the derivative here, um, dy dx, uh, actually first, let's actually rewrite this. Let's write this all as powers, right? Right, guys? Because remember I said, if we're going to use the power rule, if we're going to use the power rule, we got to go ahead and apply the power rule. Um, if we're going to go ahead and use the power rule, then we have to go ahead and um, make sure that there are exponents. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we could do dy dx like to each and every one of these. So I could show the I could show dy dx here, dy dx here, dy dx here, and then put them in brackets. Or you guys can just understand that I'm just doing each I'm doing the derivative of each of them separately. Okay? So I'm just not going to show the mathematical notation if that's okay. Right? I mean I could write dy dx of, you know, or actually be d over dx of x to the negative fifth, and then you do it for the other ones. It's just a little bit arduous task. So let's just go ahead and find the here. We're going to do negative 5 x to the negative 6 minus 2 um, times negative 1 half times x to the negative 3 halves plus 0. Does everybody at least understood how I, get the, how I got to this portion? I still got to simplify it, but at least everybody understand I brought them down and I subtracted one. Anyone I missed or any, anyone that anybody else missed? Feel okay? All right, so now we can leave this up here and then bring the negative power below, right? Multiply these two, two over one half, that's just gonna give us a one. So that's gonna be plus a one over um, three halves, x to the three halves which is also the same thing as the square root of x cubed, which is usually preferred. But it's okay if you leave it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as a rational power. Just know that that could be the square root of 3 cubed. And actually, that's it. Done. Okay? Because remember, the derivative of a constant is always going to be equal to 0. Yes? Um, no. So 